try my best to not cough. I don't feel bad or anything, but I do still have a little bit of congestion. So just bear with me. If I start to cough a little bit, I'll be okay. Uh, chapter 25 of the book of Matthew. Chapter 25 of the book of Matthew. Bless now, Lord. Lord, you help me, God. Preach this morning in a way, Father, that is honoring to you. The Lord, that I might decrease and you might increase. The Lord, move me back out of the way. The Lord, you step out front by the power of the Holy Spirit, God. You preach this message because I can't. The Lord, I don't have any ability, God. The Lord, I'm, I, I, I'm God, I'm fool before you. But Lord, I ask you, Heavenly Father, to use me this morning. God, in a special way, God. Lord, I ask for that old-time anointing, God, uh, that, that the preachers of old asked for, Father. Lord, that unction from on high, God, uh, that I might share a message, Lord, that's powerful, God. Uh, Lord, if it's your word, it's powerful. Uh, God, so let us look at the power now of your word and what it's able to do in the lives of your children, in the lives of those that are not your children yet, Lord, but want to be. Oh, God, you speak to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says in chapter 25 and verse 1, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so. Least there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And the door was shut. And the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, Open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, yes. I know you not. Or I know, yeah, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. And be seated. Help us, Lord, this morning to receive this message. Now, a loose interpretation of because I don't have time to go through the whole marriage <coughs> process of the Jewish people at that time, but this is what a lot of this is based on. When a young man had determined it was time for him to begin to look for a bride, uh, that he left his father's house and he went out to uh, find his bride uh, and his eyes caught a young lady, uh, then uh, he had to, uh, he didn't necessarily have to deal with the young lady that much. He had to deal with the father. Okay? Uh, he didn't have to, God bless you if you like that right now. Amen? For those of you men that got these 12, 13 year old youngins, these girls coming up, what if they had to, the boy had to come to the father first? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's back it up a little bit. Amen. So, he had to go to the father and work out a deal for his daughter. Amen. And he had to pay what's called a dowry. And the papa said, uh, what you got, boy? Uh, turn around and see what you look like. Let's see what you bring to the table. Uh, say, how many goats you got? You got a camel or anything? Or, you know, anything like that? How many goats? How many camels? What you, what you going to lay on the table? But you ain't just taking my girl out the door. Oh. Amen? Amen? So, pray. I, I like that. I might be stay right there all day. Amen? Hey, hey, praise the Lord. All right, boys, y'all see how it was? 
And y'all got it. See how y'all got it now? Thank God. Amen. Hey, there'd be a lot less of mess we have to deal with if you feel like that. Amen. 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 But listen, this is the way it was, and he offered the father a diary. He said, I got this, got that, this is what I'll bring, this is what I'll offer, this is what I'll give for the girl back there, the one in the back back there. I to tall and swim tall. I'll, I'll be coming to get her. Okay? Alright? Father said, well, okay, we, we can make a deal on that. We can sign a covenant. So they all, the, the, the three sat down at the table and they drank out of a common glass. She took a sip, he took a sip, Papa took a sip. Everything was cleared up there and everything was on the go. So now he left. And he left the bride there and now he went uh, to prepare and make ready uh, to, to, to attend to his bidding. Get all this stuff together. Prepare everything for a bride. <coughs> so he went away uh, and, and began to uh, prepare a place uh, for the bride. Uh, kind of like in John 14 uh, where Jesus said, I got to go away. I prepare a place. Uh, see, the bride, the Lord left heaven. Uh, he said, Father, I need to go get a bride. Uh, and he come down to earth. Uh, and he looked and he found a church for his bride. Uh, and he made a deal with God. And he said, uh, uh, that's the one I want right there. I want that changed the bride. I want that one without spot or without wrinkle. I want the top knot. I want one that's sold out to me. I want one I can have all of. I want one that'll have her whole heart. I want one, I want one that'll love me. I'll give anything for her. I remember old Jacob, he left home uh, uh, and he went to work for one and worked seven years and Papa pulled a swap on him during the night and made him marry the wrong woman. He woke up the next morning, he was married to the wrong old gal uh, and he wound up, Papa was slick uh, because, see, it had to be the first one. He wanted to marry the first one. And she wasn't real pretty or nothing, so he had to figure something out in the dark, you know, and uh, so he swapped them out there and uh, and then when, when Jake woke up in the morning, he said, ho, ho, what happened? And uh, he said, well, you know, that's the way it does. And if you want the other one, you'll have to work another seven years. So that's 14 years uh, that he had to work for the one he really wanted. Uh, amen. So, uh, but, but, but that ain't going to happen with the Lord now. He's coming back to get the chase right. He's getting the one that's separated unto him. And that is the church. The church, we are the bride of Christ. Uh, see, and he's now, uh, like he says, uh, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you unto myself. To where I am, there you are. There you may be also. And the where, where I go, you know, and the way you know, Jesus is preparing a place for his bride right now. Uh, but there's coming a day out of heaven, uh, uh, right out of heaven is out here, uh, now that, that we are the bride, and he's made his choice, uh, and we're supposed to be working and getting all things ready to receive uh, our groom. Uh, we're supposed to be making all things ready down here. Uh, so uh, not only was the young man uh, sent back to prepare uh, and get ready to receive the bride, uh, but the bride was also taking care of business in her life of uh, getting everything ready to meet him uh, so she could be prepared and get all her maids and all that ready for the wedding time, uh, for the wedding of uh, the marriage, something with the lamb. Uh, so here we go. So the Lord's in heaven. Uh, and, 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 uh, and the father says, I know uh, that you paid uh, a great price uh, for the bride. And he said, son, but not that only. Uh, we've got a great place for her when she gets here. Uh, so we want to prepare a great place. Uh, he said, yes, father, I did. Uh, he said, I gave it all. Uh, he said, I gave my blood. He said, I died on Calvary uh, for my bride. He said, I, I sold out. Uh, it cost me everything I had. It cost me all the glory. Uh, it cost me all the shame in the world. It cost me uh, being crucified uh, in front of the world, beaten and spit upon, hung out, uh, died, and was buried, and was raised the third day. Uh, praise God that He overcame the grave. Uh, he overcame death, hell, and the grave. Uh, he uh, uh, died on the cross. Uh, listen, He wasn't killed. Uh, he gave up the ghost himself. Uh, that was His. Uh, that was his privilege. Uh, he could come and go when he wanted to. He was God. He always was God. That never changed. You think, I had people before and asked me, well, do you think Jesus could have sinned? No, sinning. He was God. Amen. God can't sin. He never ceased being God, okay? Uh, he was always God. God could have never sinned, all right? So, the last, that, that makes you look not smart. Another word I used to use. The wife kind of broke me from it. That when you're not smart, if you think God could have 
end, okay? But, 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 listen, he has got now, uh, he's had 2,000 years of preparation, uh, and I believe it's about time uh, for the Lord to come back. Uh, but what's going on here with these girls, uh, they are watching uh, and waiting, and waiting on the bride or the groom to come. Uh, and I want you to think about what they said here now. In verse 6 it says, And at midnight, there was a cry made. There was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. As that shout from heaven, the bridegroom is here. Here he comes, girls. Get ready. Go out and meet the groom. And then all of them stood to attention and they began to scramble around there and the five wives grabbed their lamps and set their, trimmed their wicks and got their lamps ready and they're ready to go out the door to meet the groom and the other five that were foolish that brought no extra oil with them said the oil is a typifies uh, uh, the inwelling of the Holy Spirit. It's the ones that were really saved. The ones that really had the oil. That really had the oil in them. See? Uh, and they were ready. And that's what he tells us. To always be ready uh, for the Lord to come back at any time. He said no man knows the hour of the day uh, that the Lord is going to come. But there's coming a day right out ahead of us. We're going to hear a shout. I'm telling you, we'll hear a shout. Uh, he's going to say the bridegroom coming. Here he comes. Uh, because in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, the Bible says, for the Lord himself uh, shall ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen? Amen. Uh, there's coming a day right out ahead of us, right out ahead of us, we're going to hear a shout. There's the bridegroom coming. And it's going to shake this entire world. The bridegroom coming. Make all things ready. Go out to meet him. And those that are filled with the oil, are filled with the Spirit of God. You can't be saved and not filled on the inside with the Spirit of God. You have to have the Spirit of God dwelling inside. That's what separates us from the whole world out there. Some people say, well, I know, you know, I don't know if they're saved or lost or this or that. Listen, when you get the anointing, when you get the, the oil poured in the lamp, I'm telling you, you can't deny the presence of the oil that's inside of us. And you can never deny it. I tell you, you can move away from it. You can back slide, back step, what, whatever you want to call it there. But I'm telling you, that voice never goes away. It's always in there eating at you saying, hey, you've got to do better than this. You've got to get back to the Lord. That voice won't let you alone. If you don't have that, you don't have the oil on the inside. You're not ready uh, to meet the bridegroom, I'm telling you. And that's what getting saved today would do. That's what that would take care of today. You wouldn't have to sit it where like, oh, Lord, I don't know if I've got enough oil to make it or not. Listen to me. Anywhere the Holy Spirit of God, you've got enough oil. Amen. You're going to make it. But you're going, you're going uh, to the marriage supper of the Lamb. You're the bride of Christ. Uh, and that's an important thing. And it's an awful, uh, an awful responsibility. He said, because... The dead of Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, and I'm thinking I'm going to be a part of that one that alive and remain. I believe the Lord's going to come back before I see him and not for death. I think we're that close. I believe it's almost time for the shout. Uh, here comes the room. Uh, get out to meet him. Get, make yourself ready because here he comes. Because if you don't, look what's going to happen. Uh, this is where uh, a lot of the church, I'm scared nowadays, a lot of those that, that, that are on the road uh, of the church today, I'm afraid they're going to wound up in a position or in a condition of those that were foolish uh, and not have the true all. Uh, though they fooled themselves and they made out like they were truly saved, but really they weren't. Uh, they had an emotional experience one time. Uh, they done something with God, but they weren't sure what it was. Uh, and they claimed that that's salvation, and they're going to wait too late, one day too late. And the shout's going to come, and it's going to be time to go out and meet the, the groom. And, and they're not going to have enough oil to make it. Because he said he came at midnight and shouted, and they didn't have enough oil to make it. So look what says happened to them. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with them to the marriage. And what happened? The door was shut. That's it. No chance. No, no second chance. No, 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 no do-overs. No mulligan. Right. No do-overs. When you reject him, when you turn him down, and you think that's going to work, and the door goes shut, you can go and beat and beat and beat and beat. <coughs> and the same answer is going to come from the Lord for you.
you that day. And here comes the answer from the Lord. The bridegroom is going to answer you. It says afterward came also the virgin, saying, the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Know who you are. Wait a minute, there's other places in the Bible where this same thing is, 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 is put in there and, and, and when they come back with the Lord, did we do this? Did we do that? Did, I'm telling you, there's no works that's going to get you in the door. Right. Uh, there's no there's no church membership that's going to get you in the door. Uh, there, there's no being good that's going to get you in the door. There's going to, there's going to be no, no treating everybody right or taking care of the poor or, or doing that. Those are great and admirable things to do and we should do as Christians. But none of them is the key to get in the door. Okay, I won't get you in the door. Uh, so uh, he's going to give them the same answer. He said, I never knew you. I never knew you. So the warning is this. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Read on into the next chapter. It says, uh, because... Uh, that when, when, when the door is shut and, and he turns you away, that, that, that there's no chance, there's no opportunity. I want, I, I want to try my best to make this straight, this statement as, as strong and as positive as I can. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's nothing positive about it when you get there and the door is shut. No positive left. It's hell for you. It's fixing to be hell for you. You've been rejected by the room. He's going to say, I never knew you from who you are. You can't come into the man. There's no way. And then God's wrath begins to be poured out on this earth for those that are left here, for those that can't get in the door, for those that don't have the oil, don't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God have never been saved. I'm telling you, and we're standing right at the, the edge of that happening. We're right there. The, the signs of the times and all that's going on in politics and government and across the world and in Israel and all the decisions that are being made right now uh, with, the, with, with, with the deal of the century or whatever, Trump calling him. He's treasuring the uh, uh, Israelites and the, uh, and the Palestinians to sign that peace treaty. And uh, when that peace treaty starts, if they sign it, uh, there is a up in the 90% chances, I believe, uh, that that is the final <coughs> treaty. And once that treaty is signed, then you've got the seven years of tribulation. Once the treaty is signed, the seven years begins. Uh, when the seven years begins, the church is gone. We out of here. So, so you say, well, just look, well, just watch the news. And when you see Trump all happy and he's going like, I got a sign, I got a sign, you better start looking up. Because here comes the Lord. Here comes the groom. It's over now, seven year tribulation. And it's over, it's over. We gone. So we don't wait for seven years. We don't go through the tribulation period. The church escapes out of here. We we raptured out. And we're like days away from them possibly signing that agreement. They're negotiating it right now. That agreement. That's where we're at. So we gathered in the house uh, with our lamps, uh, praying uh, uh, to, make, to know it, that we got it all and ready. Uh, and don't be that foolish virgin uh, that you're sitting there and say, wait, 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 I'm going to need to run to town and buy something. You can't get that from man. Man don't sell it. You can't, you can't buy it. Not for sale. Can't help yourself now. Man can't help you. The time for the help that you need or you're going to need is, 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 is now is the accepted time. Now is the time you make that decision. Now is the time you make preparation for the shout. Because we're fixing to come to shout. Didn't come to shout. And I know those that, and I don't expect there's that many uh, in this room right now, uh, but there are millions and millions and millions out there uh, that say, oh, that's foolishness. And 
there's some of you in here may be fooled into believing like, oh, I don't think it's going to be that. It's going to be exactly like that. Why? Because God said so. And God's the final authority. He's the one who wrote the plan. So, so if there ain't no question about it, it's going to be like that. It's going to be just like that. Exactly how it's going to be. And you're either going to go or you're going to be left here. You're going to go in the door or you're going to stand there and knock to you. Nothing's believed on. And he said, I never knew you. Can't let you in. Can't let you in. So, here we are. Uh, first off, here's my challenge uh, for those that are, that, that are saved but not ready. How do you get ready? Oh, I know those that are in the realm of the Spirit of God are going in. Yeah, I understand that. But will you have to stand before the groom of shame with no, no works, no, 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 no crown, no nothing to earn? Uh, or what are you doing for God right now? What, what preparations are you making to meet your God and stand before Him and defend yourself with the life that you've lived since he saved you. Well, what are you doing? What what possibly could you use uh, to, to say, well, here, Lord, here's my sacrifice. Here's my works. This is what I've done for your, for your sake. Not for, not necessarily. There's a lot of Christian activities that you can get involved in that the Lord don't give a hill of beans about. Don't, don't, don't make no difference to him at all. Uh, and there's a lot of that that we try to to get to take the place of responsibility of what we're supposed to be doing. And God don't even recognize it. But, but, but there's things that are earned and there's crowns that are earned and there's positions that are earned in heaven uh, in this life right now due to what you're doing for God. What are you doing for God? <coughs> and is what you're doing for God? Or is it for you? For your own recognition? For your own exaltation? What's it for? And if it's for anything other than God alone, don't count. Amen. Don't God don't even count it. So we're standing at, at that time. And like I said, in the condition of the world that it's in right now, uh, it's perfectly right and prime uh, for, the, for the shout. And we're about to hear a shout. What are you going to do? What are you going to do if the shout comes today? The bridegroom cometh. Go out to meet him. Wait, Lord, I didn't. I... No. No wait. I understand it now, Lord. I mean, I was going to do this. God, had... listen, give me two seconds. Give me two seconds. No chance. No possibility that you could be saved now. The door shut. You can't open it for you, but then it wouldn't be God. So why don't you now? Why don't you got the time? Your heart's in a condition to receive. You're ready to do business with the Lord. Why don't you now take the perfect opportunity? You're not going to run across a better opportunity than today. Well, I'm going to wait for a better opportunity. Not going to happen. This is it. This is your better opportunity. This is it. This is because God knew you were coming. He prepared for you. He knew you were coming. He tried to stir it up to you the best way he can, the most acceptable way he can, the easiest access to himself that he can make. And he made it for you today. Take it. Take it. Take the oil. You're going to need it. You're going to need it. Your lamp won't last. It'll go out on you. Because emotionalism, all of that, let you down flat. It's going to let you down flat. Well, but you listen, I cried and everything. <coughs> I don't care if you cried. I don't care if you pulled your hair out and said don't cry. <laughs> Because I know I got saved when I got saved because I cried and everything. Don't you depend on some emotional uh, uh, upheaval in your life and claim that that will save you eternally. And what will save you eternally is a conversation with the Lord Jesus Christ, a repenting of your sin, and going to the Lord and admitting, God, I am a sinner and, and worthless before you. And God, if I wound up like this, God, no! I'm not going to go into heaven's door. And it's going to be shut on me, Lord, if 
I wound up in this condition when the shaft comes. God give me strength, grace. Give me enough courage today to go for the altar. Amen. To be filled with the Spirit. So I don't get caught when I hear the shout. And preparations are not made. And in God, I don't have a chance for the marriage of Let me make ready today. Will you be that wise Version, or would you be that <laughs> that thanks? Well, I thank the Lord. I mean, I, the Lord's going to let me in. Come on. <coughs> not without the Holy Spirit. Not without the Holy Spirit. Not, not without Him in you. You can't do it. Yeah, but He's a good God. You're right. But He loves you. You're right. He died for you. He done everything he could for you. He begged and begged and begged you. He tried and tried and tried to get you to come. You turned him down over and over and over again. And don't you ever say God didn't give you ample opportunity to be saved. You got one of the greatest opportunities you'll ever have in your lifetime. You're sitting in the midst of it right now. You're sitting right in the middle of one of the greatest opportunities that will ever be afforded to you to accept Christ. You're, you're right here right now. It's time. So don't get there and tell God, Lord, I didn't have a chance. Well, I, I, never did, I never did understand that. Only thing you've got to understand today, you ain't got to know all the Bible. You ain't got to know no verses in the Bible. That's what you got to know. I'm a lost sinner. If I die like this, I'm going to hell. I've never went to God asking him to forgive me, admitted that I was a sinner and asked him to forgive me. I never have. I'm going to die and go to hell. If, I go, if, if, the, if the shout comes a day, I ain't got a chance. Well, you do have a chance. Between now and the shout comes. And that's right now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. You don't have that. You got it right now. And God's ready. He's ready. Well, I've got so. But get all that. You have not got anything that God cannot overcome. You have not got anything that God cannot forgive. You have got not anything in your life uh, that, 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 that blocks you from being saved today. There is nothing. You have no excuse. God to turn him down. Amen. God will not accept any excuse you put up. He won't accept it. It's no good. It's not true. He loves you so much that regardless of how far you have fallen, He has reached way past where you have fallen and plucked many out of the fire. So don't tell me that. He's reached way beyond where you are and saved you. So, and can He save you today? Don't you think you got to go get nothing right straight? You got to quit this and start that. Kind of start going to church and get kind of church. That'll mess you up more than anything. Amen. You need to, when you understand you lost, you need to get saved. Amen. And let the Lord work that stuff out the right way. Amen. Amen. Which I've been the for preaching now. I've done my part. I've done my part. I, that's all I can do. It's all I, I've done everything I do. I love you. I care about I don't want to see one person in this room go to hell. <laughs> And I'm afraid if I close right now, that's the folks going to go to hell. Because they're not convinced yet. But my part's over with the rest of it between you and God and the Holy Spirit that's tugging on your heart strength right now. I see him not me. Because his part goes on right now. You've got to decide. Father, we close our eyes, bow our heads. Every eye closed, every head bowed.